Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to create your own caching system on ASP.NET. The idea is, let's just say you log in, you grab, a, you grab a data set, a big data set from the database that takes a long time. So let's say you've changed pages, you got to go back to that page and you got to go again, grab the data set. Instead of doing that, we're going to kind of save that data set into the server memory and the next time you query that data you don't have to go to the database wait for that process to finish you can just grab it that grab that portion from the server and return it to your client so let's get started first thing we're going to do is create a new project uh, asp.net web application.net framework cache testing that's what i'm going to Great. It's going to be a, just a web API. Create a new class. Add class. Let's call it cache model. You can call it whatever you want. This is this is what I like to call it. First line of code. We're gonna we're gonna declare a cache object. So private, okay, let's do static so we can use through all, our, through all our code and we don't have to be in instantiating this class over and over and over. Cache, just cache, make sure you just cache underscore, cache, oops, cache equals null. All right, if it complains about cache, it's because it's missing the reference and the reference is using System.web.caching. Go ahead and click on it. And then this is uh, this is the only reference we're going to be needing for this project, for this example, right? Let's go ahead and delete the necessary stuff here. So next, next we're going to create a private static cache object. And it's going to have a get. and a set. I will drop this code into GitHub so you guys can download it, do whatever you want, all right? So this is the get's gonna say if, if underscore cache equals no, I'll explain the entire code after I'm done with everything. Let's make this a little bigger, all right? If underscore equals no, cache equals System.web. H. Uh, oops, it's not weak. Web. Dot HTTP. Context. Dot current. Oops. Equals no. System dot web dot http runtime dot cache or system dot web dot http oops http context dot current dot cache and then the set's going to be cache equals value oh and, and on, 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 I'm sorry, on the here we have to return underscore cache. All right, so what's going on here is we're creating a cache object with the get and a set. The get is if cache, if underscore cache, which is this one here, it's null. Either we use uh, the system web, the runtime cache, or we use the HTTP context. So now next step is going to be, let's say now we have the cache object, we need to find a way to get, add, and remove from the cache. Public, static, object. I'm just gonna name it object so it can be used for any type of object. Get, let's put the string. This is going to be the key of your cache or your store cache. So you're gonna return cache.get and then you're gonna pass it in the key. This is to retrieve a saved cache into your caching system. Now let's go ahead and public static 
void add. This is how we're going to be adding a object to your cache. And you pass in the key first, and then you pass in the object and value. You pass in the actual value of your object. Oh, it's not a string, static. And then what you're going to do is the very first thing is you got to set, you got to set your cache settings, right? And the very first one is going to be cache item priority. So priority is going to be equals cache. This on this one, just for an example, I'm going to say it's not removable, right? Where it, it's not going to go away until we delete it or until the app pool on ASP.NET server refreshes itself. And then we need a sliding, we need an expiration. That's what this is. Expiration, which is going to be a time span. So it's probably missed. It's going to complain about something here using, there you go. From minutes, Oops, not from seconds, from minutes. So let's do like 10 minutes. And then in cache.insert, this is this is the line where we actually add our object and key to the cache itself. So we're gonna do the key first. Key is gonna, it's it's pretty much a unique identifier for this object in the cache. So in value, and as you can see here, it's gonna give you sort of what to insert. If you do a comma, now the next one is there's no ob there's no cache dependency, so it's gonna be null. And then comma again. Daytime is going to be daytime dot max value. So absolute expiration is going to be max value for now. And this sliding expiration is going to be the expiration we created. And then the last item is update on update callback. We don't need to use that right now. Update on callback is every time you update the cache, it calls a different function. So that way you can do, you know, every time you every time you update an item in cache, you can go update the database too, right? Some sort of, you know, functionality like that. Oh, and I forgot the priority. The priority comes right after the expiration. There you go. Let me go over what I just did here. So this is this is the function that's going to add your items, your your object to the cache, to the cache model. The priority, it's really if the cache can be removed, if the cache has to, if the cache expires, expiration, this, this means after 30, 10 minutes, this object, it's going to expire from my cache. If the object is not accessed, if I don't retrieve it, or if I don't delete it, it's going to be gone from the cache within 10 minutes. And the last item on our caching system, it's going to be static void remove. To remove, all I need is a string key. And remove is pretty straightforward. It's going to be cache.remove and then the key. So remove is pretty straightforward. Remove and get, the pretty straightforward, is just one function. Um, the add, it's a, there's a little bit more to it. Now, the add, there are options where you don't need any of this, right? You can re really just pass in the value and the key, and it should be good to go. There's no need for all the extra stuff. All right, so let's go that way to make it simpler. And then we can kind of go over a little bit in depth what's, you know, what to do here. But all right, so this is the basic functionality of our caching, our custom caching system. There's a lots we can do with this, but let's go ahead and run some tests. All right, first I have to, let's open up a controller. I have to call this different ways, right? So on the get for the default values controller, I'm gonna call, you know, instead of doing this here, I'm gonna do var result equals, I'm gonna put this array here and return a result. I'm doing this so I can actually insert this result into my cache and then retrieve it here. So cache model dot add. All right, so this is gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna create the object with a unique identifier. For this test, I'm just gonna put, put ID 
zero one two three it doesn't really matter what you call it or you can be a database id you can be all kinds of stuff here right and then i'm going to pass in my result object so when i call this we're going to add the result object you know this array to my cache and then for testing purposes no nah, that's fine to my cache right now, what I'm going to do next is on the get with an ID, just so you guys see it's different, I'm going to retrieve the array. So cache model dot get, and then I'm going to pass in my ID. All you need is to pass in your ID in order to get it. And then var result equals that. Okay. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here and here. So that way we we see each we we're gonna step through each one of those lines to see what's going on. Let's go ahead and run my API. All right, just give it a second. All right, so API is up and running. Let's go ahead and hit that controller API slash values. Hit enter. All right, so we're here on the first get, the one without the the parameter. We got a result. That's, this is the two strings that we're looking for. Now I'm gonna step into this cache function here and it's gonna get inserted into our cache model. Now it's already in there, right? Now in order for us to verify if it got, if that result array got inserted, I'm gonna go ahead and go into this controller. I mean, I'm sorry, this function, I'm just gonna put an ID of zero so he knows the difference. All right, so it's gonna go in there with this ID. It's going. It's gonna go into our cache model with the ID zero one two three, and it's gonna retrieve our array. So if you look at it, and it says value one and two, that's basically it. This is the basic functionality. Let's do one more test here. As you guys can see, I got it. All right, let's go do one more test. So, but every time you start your app and restart, you start your app and then close and then restart it, your cache gets reset, just so you guys are aware of it. All right, so one more test, I'm gonna do one more test run here, is I'm gonna remove, so cache, just so you guys can see, cache model dot remove, and to remove, you also have to use the ID, And then after removing it, I'm gonna try to retrieve it again to see what happens. So you guys understand what's going on here. Let's result one, let's result two, right? At all. All right, let's go ahead and run it again. Same, same process. First, I'm gonna go to the first get by just doing API values. So it's gonna get added. And then the second one, I'm just gonna go with ID zero. So I retrieved it from results. You can see it's here. So the next step it's, it's gonna happen is it's gonna get removed. So now when I retrieve it again, this result to here should be null. And as you guys can see, result, it is null. All right, so this is the basic caching system that I, I wanted to show you guys. So let's go over one more time here on the our cache model. Basically, instantiate a cache a cache object with a get to to choose what kind of uh, DLL it's going to use. Either it's going to be the HTTP context or the HTTP runtime cache. It's either or. And then we have to create a function to get the data from our cache. The added the data that has been added to our cache. If nothing has been added, you just gotta get a null. And it's based on a key, a, a, a unique identifier. And then the add, the add basically you pass in a unique identifier with your object and it gets saved in cache for the session. And then the last one is to remove. The remove works pretty similar to the add, it's just it removes based on a unique identifier. And just, just to be clear, if you restart your session or if you restart your app poll on your server, your cache, it's going to be restarted and reset. That's it, guys. If you guys have any questions, concerns, just drop a comment below. Thank you.